Team Awesome is back. Welcome back to Tangle Talk with Team Awesome. Um, guys, we have exciting news. This is literally just a couple days after we heard this in the first place. Everybody probably knows already, but we have the official U.S. hiatus end date. We're Finally. back, we are back. Yes. March 3rd is going to be the beginning of the end. Um, we have uh, one episode. Oh, they are changing the schedule on us again <laughs> because, you know, it's tangled. So we can't maintain a normal schedule. Gotcha. Um, so on March 10th, we're getting one episode at 730 in the morning. So that's now right getting early. <laughs> right early. But after that, we're going to start getting two episodes on every Sunday and it's going to start at seven in the morning. <laughs> So apparently they think that we are toddlers <laughs> who have, are like sugar cereal and don't care what time mommy and daddy get up. We're just going to get up and watch our cartoons. But guess what? We're going to do it. We're going to get up. Yep. <laughs> hey, I already have to work that day and yeah, I normally wake up at like eight. So I'm just going to wake up an hour earlier and watch <laughs> Tangled. My, I, don't, you, I don't work on Sundays, but I do... Get, tend to wake up around 8 because if nothing else my cats wake me up and I'm just gonna be like screw it I'll just get up at 7 and if I got a nap I got a nap so I mean it'll happen I mean and knowing me I will stay up the night before and mm -hmm. I will watch it and oh, then yeah. I'll get no sleep and then I will watch it again the next morning and then I'll nap so hey that's my life now well and I have to wait till 3am for it to <laughs> upload so I might just not even go to sleep <laughs> <laughs> you're like what's the point just watch Watch the two episodes, uh, and then be up for three more hours, and then just watch them again. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be great. Yep. I'm excited for the two episode thing, though. That's, uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's fun. That's, like, we I mean, it's great, and it's also weird. It makes me mm -hmm. be like, are you, like, apologizing to us? <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> did you, did you see what, what Germany intends to do? We'll go, oh, crap, they're gonna get so far ahead of us if we don't. Um, yeah, yeah. Tangled scheduling. Hello, Tangled schedule. Well, that works out. But I mean, Disney Channel. I mean, they're 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 listening to us, I guess, or they're being really really weird. I don't know. It's so bizarre. Yeah. Um. So now that we know when the hiatus is going to end, we Tangled Talk is off of our reduced schedule, and we will be posting weekly once again. So Ooh, yay! yay! Let's hope we get through the rest of season one before season two starts again. Because we are also going to be reviewing both episodes on our Tangle Talks. And so these are likely to be longer episodes since it's going to be brand new episode, but two of them. And brand new episodes were like 45 minutes already. Mm -hmm. So ah, that's going to be an interesting schedule. So yep. thanks for sticking with, sticking with us if you choose to stick with us. Um, okay, so speaking of all of this craziness, we do have another episode title and description. Um, this title is a direct translation from... The German title, however, the German title also, I mean, it comes across as like, this would be what it's called in English, mm -hmm. because the German titles I noticed have not been as like clever as the English titles in general. Mm -hmm. like, clever's not right, abstract, I should say, because I mean, I know a lot of the time the English titles don't actually make sense for the episode. We all know that yeah. Fitz Her we all know that Fitz Her Herbert P.I. had nothing to do with private investigation. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you nearly said Fitz Pervert. Oh, that takes me back. <laughs> it takes me back to the old days of fandom. Oh goodness when gracious! When we were all Fitz Perverts. <laughs> what do you mean when? Oh, when? What? No, when? <laughs> well, I mean when we were all referred to as such. We no longer refer to ourselves as that. No. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so um, so the new episode is titled in the German translation, it's Mirror Mirror. And this is Rap Rapunzel and her group come to a hospitable old estate. But when they look into a mirror, strange things happen. Now, OK, honestly, I have one thought, one predominant thought about this. And that predominant thought is that is a very vague description. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Vague descriptions tend to make me go, hmm, I don't know if this is going to be one of my favorite episodes because that's too vague. If they could do anything mm -hmm. with something like that. Yeah. Just things begin to happen is like, gee, thanks. Is this a body swap episode? Oh, is my God. Is this a another mood shift episode? Is this a mirror world episode? Like, what the heck is... I mean, this is, I mean, it's so, like, it's too vague. I don't, I yeah. don't, I don't like how vague that is. It bothers me. Do they me. go into the mirror? Is the mirror like the mirror of Erised and Harry Potter? And they see things like the idol, I guess. Because, mm -hmm. right. That again, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
So, yeah. So, I can't say that I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds so exciting. I'm a little more wary on this one, just as an initial reaction. And I'm going to, yeah. So, yeah. Initial reaction, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, so, today, that was actually a very brief review, because we actually talked about this, you know, not that long ago. So, we're caught up on news. How great is that? Woohoo! Uh, so, we're going to go straight into our more of our review, and we're starting at Pascal's story. Oh, boy, Pascal's story. So, <laughs> I remember fondly that our first interaction with Pascal's story was at D23 Expo in 2017. Oh, yeah. And... Um, we were, we being Ellie and myself, were sitting with the crew behind Ricky Roxburgh. And this is, believe it or not, the first time that we really learned who Ricky Roxburgh was. I mean, we talk about him a lot, but part of why we talk about him a lot is because he greeted us in such a warm and friendly way. He knew who we were and we didn't know who he was. And that might be the first time that's ever happened to me in my life that like, same. So it was like shocking. And it was just sort of like this, this instant bond that that this guy was so excited to meet us and now we're like yay ricky we love ricky so we're sitting behind ricky and they played the animatic introduction to pascal's story and we hit the guy like straight up <laughs> i'm so sorry Why did you like, abuse we, ricky <laughs> we did, like we like i, we saw, I know I saw, like clapped him on the back and socked him in the arm or something we beat it wasn't guy, anger no it wasn't it, it was, was excitement. so much excitement i and was just like tapping his back like <laughs> like just, just slapped him on the back like oh my god i think i'm at a grip his shoulder and shook him at one point i'm not yeah. even positive but like the funny thing is that now when i talk to ricky about <laughs> our first ever interaction um the funny thing is that he's like yeah you absolutely hit me but i also didn't feel it because i was stunned i was Aww. in like this auditorium full of people who were cheering for my work it was like flabbergasting Aww. so it was so great. And so that was our first introduction ever to who Ricky Roxburg was. And that was when we started referring to him as the chameleon murderer because <laughs> he's a chameleon murderer. So uh, anytime, he's- anytime you, you all know this, but anytime anything bad happens to a character, I'm like, did Ricky write that? <laughs> Guys, I legitimately had legitimately had a time when I was watching Tangled, the movie. And it's, at the end and he cuts your hair and he dies and my brain went did Ricky write this? And I, was like, I know Ricky didn't write that but I mean I am now so conditioned to look at tragedy and blame Ricky for it if yep. it's referring to Tangled it's like yeah now this is Ricky's fault it's his fault somehow I just know it um, he had something to do with this I he just had know something it. to do with it yep. <laughs> sure he had something to do with this um, so, yeah, so we start off with our good old, you know, baby Pascal, who everybody instantly fell in love with because he's freaking adorable. Like, I mean, and honestly, it's not literally everyone. And like, I talk about my sister, sister on this a lot, but she's like not a hardcore Tangled fan, which is fine because not everybody's a hardcore Tangled fan. But she's also the sort of person who thinks Pascal is kind of pointless. So she's like, well, that was unnecessary. I'm <laughs> just like, oh, but the whole episode. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, yeah, that's always kind of amusing to me. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff that happens in this episode. First of all, as we're going in chronological order, um, this is like the last time Lance is antagonistic is in this episode. And then mm-hmm. after that, he's just getting along with everybody. Um but there's a lot of a lot of really great stuff that happens in this episode. Um, this is where we get, you know, Eugene's immortal line of "I've had two things running through my head all day. What is what is Chutney and you?" That's like and my favorite something. thing he's ever said. It's, it's so, so cute. cute. <laughs> I know. It's like and like the fact that he just like kind of runs up to her in the hall because like, oh hey, you're free, huzzah! It's just. Oh my gosh, so I mean, there's a lot of adorable new dream stuff. We get Eugene in his pajamas with his sleep mask in this one. Oh my um, god. I was like, he's, she's in his room! <laughs> okay, and honestly, guys, I have often said that, like, I really want, I really wish I could see every single outfit from the main group represented at some point in mm-hmm. cosplay form, but my top of my list is I want to see somebody cosplaying as Eugene in his pajamas. Like, straight up that's that's the goal that's what i want yes 
Any face of you mask and all. out there, yeah, face mask and all. I mean, push <laughs> yeah. it, like pushed up so like his bangs are kind of sticking up. You know, that's what I want. <laughs> Number one, I want that more than I want the deep cut. I just that's what I want. Is oh, I want Eugene in these pajamas. <laughs> yes. Love that deep cut. Honestly, oh. if I saw somebody cosplaying as pajama Eugene, I might propose to them right then and there. <laughs> <Be> like, <laughs> would you just like to marry me? Because same. That's honestly amazing. same. And my husband would be fine with it. <laughs> he knows who your true person is. Yep, he knows. Yep. He knew. <laughs> he knew what he was getting into. Yep. He really He's good. like, for better or worse, or Eugene. Yep. <laughs> I think one of my favorite parts in this part of the episode is when Rapunzel's like, well, why don't you take Lance on your little boat trip that he wanted to take her on? And the only reason he didn't want to do that is because he wanted to steer the boat. And he knew that Lance was going to want to steer the boat. And I, I that cracks me up. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much because that goes back to like in um, Beyond the Corona Wall where he just straight up says to Lance's face that he loves him. Mm-hmm. The thing I love about that is that Joe just goes to show that they are so secure in their friendship that they're mm-hmm. like, what? You think we haven't gone on like dates before? <laughs> like, it's like, I want to like, steer the boat. I, I like, want to oh steer God. the boat. He's such a boat hog. <laughs> God, I love, I love that friendship. Oh, I love that. I mean, mm-hmm. and this was because this aired before Queen for a Day. Um, this was our first ever sign of Rapunzel breaking a promise, and so this was like shocking to us as an audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember being like, "Oh God, she broke a promise to Pascal of all people! Oh my mm-hmm. God, this is like horrible." But then, like, poor freaking Pascal. Like, I mean. I've always wondered, like, in my role play stuff, like, I know I have a tendency to um, forget about Pascal while I'm writing. Mm -hmm. So, like, any role play partner I have who can keep me on track and remind me that Pascal exists is like, oh, yeah, thank you. That's why I just send him away. I appreciate that, Kelsey, that you mentioned his existence. (laughs) I'm like, Pascal, go over there. It's fine. (laughs) Oh, good. He's, like, acknowledged and also not present. This is fantastic. (laughs) But yeah, so um, but I've I've often wondered things like how would Pascal cope to Rapunzel now having to divide her attention between him and so many other people, not just him and Eugene, but him and like the entire kingdom, you know. So um, do you know what? And thinking about it, if you in in that makes this even kind of weirder because like he'd already like. I'm saying like a lot. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> he'd already established that he was willing to, you know, die for her because he's like, you know, I'll just go drop myself into the Demanitus device. It's fine. Mm-hmm. And then now he's getting his little tail in a knot because she's busy, you know. And it's like sometimes you know that he's like human levels of intelligence and comprehension. And so you would think he'd get that she was busy but at the same time she's never broken a promise to him so he's all upset about that but this one also had a lot of cute little homages to various other things like um first it had like max fighting with a sword which we don't see very often (laughs) which we should see more of because he's a guard he should have a sword um we have the whole rapunzel like hangs herself upside down to talk to her animal friends which she's you know did in the movie a couple times and this time she's like doing to pascal and that's all great and good. Um, we, of course, before Pascal runs out, like, runs off, we have that glorious moment where Lance shows up. And in the in the in production order, or rather in air order, this was the second time we'd ever seen Lance, mm-hmm. and which left everybody with the question of what is he doing wandering around the castle? <laughs> like, why is he here? What? I mean, I'm really happy to see him again, but what is he doing here? And so when we found out that they were not aired in, produ- in production order, it was like, oh, that makes so much more sense. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, yeah, this was the last antagonistic thing that Lance did with any of the characters, which was to eat the entire dinner that Pascal had made for Rapunzel. Um, so that was pretty uh, entertaining of, of Lance, but <laughs> at the same time, what a jackass, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and also, like, Pascal cooked a lot, man. Like, how did Lance eat all of that? Pascal cooked a lot. That's what I said last time I watched it. I'm like, who cooked all this? Was this Pascal? I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Either he cooked it all himself or he, like, went down to the to the kitchen and he cute squeaked his way into <laughs> instructions. And... <laughs> It's like Ratatouille. He was standing in the chef's hair. 
<laughs> oh, that would be amazing. I'll accept that as a <laughs> Yeah, that's great. That's even better than Bird variant. Pascal has Ratatouille powers. Yes. And that's he can just my stand list. Up and, oh my gosh, do you realize how like utterly confounded and irritated Eugene would be if Pascal got in his head and started pulling oh. his hair and crawling his arms? Well, first he'd be upset because no one touches the Eugene hair except Rapunzel. Very right. true. No right. one. No one touches it. And now uh, he's doing it with his tiny claws. Yeah. And, and now it's controlling him? What is this? No, that would be amazing, and that's an AU that I need now. Uh, I hadn't even considered that. I love it. That's great. So, so Pascal goes in, and, and his entire dinner is ruined by Lance, who not only ate the whole thing, but made him watch. <laughs> <laughs> trapped him under a glass and made him watch while he ate the whole thing. So, way to go, Lance. That's super swell of you. <laughs> um, so, then we had our gigantic freaking shock where they... Well, okay, no. I'm going to not even get to that part. I'm going to get to the part where they searched the castle all night. <laughs> um, and so now the trio of, so Eugene and Rapunzel are exhausted because they've been searching the castle all night. And Rapunzel is like, her nerves are so frazzled that she's like literally screaming at people, which is like <laughs> beautiful. I love that part where Eugene's like, hey, Cass, Rapunzel's a little upset. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, but it's like, I'm like, your favorite line is the, you know, the, the first, number one, what is Chutney? And number two, you, one of my favorites, yes, I want to keep looking. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have a wide range of favorites in this show. Yeah. <laughs> Every emotion. <laughs> Absolutely delivered on, on great lines and oh, great so animation good. and great mm-hmm. expression. And I know that like Tom Caulfield worked on this one. And so his storyboards are always like amazing. Mm-hmm. And Due to the care and and whatnot of the actual animation, I'm pretty sure that Julianne was one of the animators on it because, I mean, there are people at Mercury who are constantly singing her praises about how well she animates this show. Mm -hmm. Um, And so seeing how good some of the animation was, I'm pretty sure she was on it. Um, Also, in that whole conversation with Rapunzel and Eugene, you had the bit where he... uh, acted like he was wounded by this information and he literally makes the same sort of grimace that he did when Gothel stabbed him. Mm-hmm. So like that was great. Um that was evil. Was evil <laughs> and hysterical. Like I'm like, oh he like has practiced making that face. He can just call it on command. How wonderful. <laughs> uh, so but yeah I mean that is honestly that whole grimace into the smile and then the the 90 degree rotation of the camera where he's looking over at him and he's got his hand over his heart. That's one of my favorite bits of mm-hmm. animation. I, also, series. I love her grabbing his cheek. Yes it's so her grabbing cute. his cheek. Oh, so little I'm like, like scene is so great i love it so much it's really well done so pascal runs off to the tower which shocked all of us to our very core that that i remember all the speculation was flying about how we're gonna how are they gonna handle being back in the tower Mm -hmm. we're actually gonna have like some questions answered such as did they bother to clean anything up the answer was clearly no they did not bother to clean anything up oh that was so good (laughs) um i mean and i know that we are a little bit like ruffled about Eugene allowing Rapunzel to go up in the tower by himself by herself Mm -hmm. but I also like how in character it was for him to be like okay first of all she kind of wants to do this alone and second of all like he's not keen to revisit the place where he died Mm -hmm. you know but then he is later on which is kind of funny honestly and you know also written by Ricky that's the really funny part so Mm, I think a little bit of that <laughs> I think a bit of, of that is actually like coping mechanism. That's what I really feel like. He's like, yeah. well, if I want to be up in here, I might as well make light of it, and that's my coping mechanism. Yeah. So, um, I get that. Oh, also, like, I really want to know why does this snake have it in for this chameleon <laughs> in particular? Like, what a vengeful snake! Like, what the heck, man? Just move on with your life, mm-hmm. you know? Because the- that snake is Ricky. <laughs> 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 I'm so mean. I'm sorry, Ricky. Well, you know what? It's I not- know you love Pascal. You just also love to hurt him. <laughs> See, you're not wrong, though, because, like, when that snake appears on the screen, like, Ricky's name flashes. It was like the warning. The That's snake true. is Ricky, you know? Yep. 
So, I mean, we got the beautiful drama of Rapunzel going back up into the tower for the first time since she left. We had that great moment where they see the tower and she just sort of, like, falls back into Eugene and he, oh, like, yes. holds on to her. That's beautiful. Um, you've got Cass standing there being like, I don't see what the big deal is. <laughs> <laughs> that That she just did not, you know, she didn't have the emotional attachment to this place that everybody else did. Um... And so you get up in the tower and you've got Rapunzel's hair is all over the place and you've got the broken chain on the banister which shows how they got Eugene out in the first place. I'm pretty sure that what ended up happening is that they like use something to break the chain. I'm going to guess it's one of Rapunzel's many art tools like a chisel or something mm-hmm. like that. And then he lock picked the, the, the cuff off, mm-hmm. you know. But that was still like so the chain is there and the hair is there and the broken glass is there and and. Everything's there. The only thing that's not there, and it's only because you know that they would have left a, you know, dry blood if Disney had let them, and you know oh. Disney did not let them do it. Like the fact that like Varian bleeds on screen in you know what the hair was like astounding that they got away with that. Even <laughs> yeah. Kim was recently on a podcast that I listened to, and she was saying that she can't believe they let her do that. Like she boarded that scene, and she cannot believe that they're like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> like. <laughs> So she's like, she's positive she never would be able to get away with that now. You know, if she were to like board the same scene for season three, you'd never get the blood or yeah. the hit in the head. Doesn't matter. So you've got, you know, this snake who's out to kill Pascal because I guess he's hungry for that, this particular bloodline of chameleon. <laughs> Which I mean, and this also like, like solidifies that chameleons are like indigenous to Corona, I guess. You know, mm-hmm. these tropical lizards, like, just live here some for some reason. But, like, that just, like, that actually just keys in the whole it's a fantasy world thing. Like, <laughs> so, I mean, no, honestly, like, anytime you get any sort of a, a difference like that, it's like, you know, this isn't actually our world. It's not a direct parallel to anywhere. And here's some proof. There's a chameleon that just lives here. <laughs> um, in this place where it, like, snows, there's chameleons who live here. Um <laughs> They've adapted. It's fine. Yeah, they're good. It's good. They're fine. They're good. Um, yeah. So then you get that the, the beautiful reconciliation, and you know, <laughs> the random random ass comment of the snake falls, and then you just like friend of yours. It's like, that, like <laughs> just this great little one line. It's like, oh, nice one liner, huzzah. <laughs> And so Rapunzel takes Pascal back to the castle and they all live happily ever after until the next episode. Um, But yeah, so I mean, this was like, I know this is Ricky's favorite episode that he wrote in season one. It's not his favorite episode, period, but he has told me that this is his favorite season one episode. Um, Happiness is is his favorite season two episode. So um, yeah, he's, he's, so I can't wait to see what his favorite season three episode is because I think that's his favorite overall. Oh, I can't Um, wait. I can't wait. Whatever it <laughs> so, is, it's gonna be a doozy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely agree. It's gonna be a doozy. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so next up we have Big Brothers of Corona, which like topped my charts of favorite episodes for like ever. It might even still be my favorite episode. It's really hard to say. Like we're starting to encroach in the territory of there are so many episodes that I can no longer pick a favorite, you know? Yeah. Different ones bring different things to the table. Mm-hmm. And this one I mean, oh, God, this one was so good. I still cry every time I watch this episode. Like, I'll be, like, making gifts of scenes, and I'll tear up just while I'm making gifts. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is such a good episode. So this is the episode where we meet Ingri and Red, and I'm very glad that they have returned not only in season two, but we know for a fact they're going to be in season three also because the voice actresses have said as much on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Yay! So we know I we're love getting my girls. We know we're getting angry and red. And for all we know, we're getting more angry and red in season two. After all, did any of us expect Madame Canardis and Vigor to show back up? No. Nope. No, but I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for my monkey boy to come back. <laughs> and for him to bring me so many more dark fins. You do this. That's the so, next, yeah, that's the next one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's the next one aired yeah. in Germany. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so... Yeah, as, um, I'm not missing it. <laughs> so, as of this recording, guys, uh, um, the first new episode has aired in Germany, and they've 
got happiness is yesterday and they got peril on the high seas today. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to like thank the people on Tumblr who have been doing their dang this to like not post spoilers. Like a lot of people said, I've watched the episode, but I will not talk about it. Like if you want to talk to me, talk to me privately. I'm not going to post about it. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate about it. I appreciate that because I'm one of the fools who is going to wait until it shows up in the U S I'm like, first Listen, of all, I'm, I'm going to do it. Just not this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> See, honestly, I, I wonder of myself how long I'll last. Like, am I going to be able to hold out the whole time or am I going to eventually catch up? Because Germany is also going to be getting two new episodes a week. So they're going to just stay ahead of us constantly, mm-hmm. like five episodes ahead of us. So mm-hmm. I'm just like, what's going on? <laughs> you know? Well, to, Germany- to everyone who's not watching, if you suddenly stop hearing from me, you'll know why. <laughs> it's because I can't, I will not allow myself to be on the internet because I will tell everyone that I was right. I will scream it to the high heavens but I won't do it on the internet until everyone's seen it. I appreciate so it. Everyone can know. So yeah, so Big Brothers of Corona, it was so great because we got more annoyed Eugene, which I love. Mm-hmm. We got to really get, this is really when we really started to get to know Lance. And that was great because, I mean, previously we had, you know, his really bit moments. And I mean, in, in his return episode, you know, the return of Strongbow, um, that was old Lance that we met. And so this was the first time we really got to see what he's like now. And so, you know, the fact that it all opens up with, Eugene and Lance helping the guard with the whole how to catch a thief thing and this silent strikers thing and we got that Eugene in the cloak moment. Oh yeah, that's this and- episode. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I love them in their painting. Yes. Oh my god. I, I want I want I wish that the artist who did that painting would like post the painting. Like right? mm-hmm. like just post that picture. I want a um, great cap of that just perfect yeah. exactly the way it is high quality that's fantastic and hiding behind a painting of themselves <laughs> <laughs> they're such dorks and then in this episode we also get like eugene the sleuth which like this is what i was talking about previously about eugene is smart he just doesn't apply himself but when he applies himself he's really smart you know he had out his little pegboard and he like pinned all the points on the city that had been hit and he drew the spiral he's like here's where they're gonna hit next because that's their pattern (laughs) and he like he's got his smarts you know and and i i I love that and this is also no that's not that episode hang on my brain is is trying to catch up on me there's too Um, many we're getting them mixed up (laughs) i'm starting to get episodes of people looking at boards and other people falling asleep it's all mixed up i don't understand (laughs) um so yeah so we we meet angry and red and then you know they're assigned to eugene and lance as you know well you two can scare them straight or whatever Mm-hmm. you know talk them out of being thieves and make them give back the stuff they stole i love how it's like make them give back the stuff they stole was top priority and i understand that but like does the captain remember when cassandra was a little kid could he make her do anything mm-hmm. you know actually cast baby because she follows orders so who knows um yes but even the littlest of kids don't listen yes that is absolutely true and you would know because you work with little kids yes i had a child who i was like hey kiddo wait for your adult and he's like oh i don't need an adult i'm gonna go play and i was like uh mm, (laughs) you're like i tried you're you're technically (laughs) breaking the rules but it's okay you're fine (laughs) (laughs) okay okay i just thought i just couldn't help but laugh because he was so like matter of fact about it he's like no okay i'm gonna go play i don't need an adult and i was like okay fair (laughs) wow you're so independent (laughs) yeah and he was probably like i don't know five or six so (laughs) kids are so funny yeah like today i had this great uh moment where i was reading over this thing about you know how to write dialogue for little kids and people were like pointing out you know, age groups, at what age their mannerisms are like this, their speech patterns are like that, yada, yada. And I started recounting the story about my niece that I really love. She was four, and it was she hadn't been four for very long. We were at, like, Michael's or something like that, and she found this toy, and she wanted to play with it while we were in the store. We're like, yeah, sure, while we're in the store, you can play with it. But, honey, just so you know, we're not buying that toy, you know? You can play with it, but we're not buying it. And she's like, but I want it. And I'm like, honey, 
no, you have a box full of toys at home. And she's like, well, what if I got rid of all of my toys at home? What if I had a yard sale and sold all my toys? Then could I have this? And I'm like, yes, if you have a yard sale and you sell all your toys, we can absolutely come back to the store and buy you that toy. And she pauses and she thinks and she goes, to save time, how about we buy me this toy now and I'll sell my toys later? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, you're four. And that is really great negotiation for a four-year-old. I mean, I see right through you. But that was like <laughs> brilliant. Well done. Yeah. Congratulations. I always might buy, might buy you that toy because I'm proud of you. <laughs> exactly. People really underestimate sometimes how smart kids are. Mm-hmm. Kids, like, like, they learn the language so fast. And, and they pay attention to everything. And mm-hmm. dang. So, speaking of kids who pay attention to everything, you've got Angry and Red who are, like, really great thieves. Like, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh. Like, and they're, they can slip a cuff faster than Eugene. Like, holy crap. <laughs> so, you know, Eugene and Lance are having the run around trying to chase these kids down all over town every time they, they slip out of their cuffs and and get their great little nicknames of Angry and Red. Red because she's got red hair and she's fancy. I just love how Eugene's like, don't steal. Lance is like, steal the best thing in the room. <laughs> <laughs> don't steal, period. Okay, but if you gotta steal, <laughs> don't steal your worthless things like combs, you know? I love when they tell Eugene that he was just bad at what he did. And Eugene's like, oh, <laughs> bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> he gets so like, mad. He is mad. He's going through this whole Beach. That was so great. We were the original strikers. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, also, like when they first catch back up to him, he's like, oh, rule, one, rule number one. Don't make somebody chase you five miles. It makes them cranky. <laughs> he's such a Eugene Fitz dad in this episode. It's so I love good. It. It's so great. We're like, and this is how we know that Eugene will be a great father because, yep. I mean, anybody who thinks that neither Eugene nor Rapunzel will be disciplinarians needs to rewatch this episode mm-hmm, because yeah. Eugene will absolutely be the disciplinarian. He might have to learn how to do it, but he will do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's harder with your own kid, but like, oh, yeah. he's he'll do it. We'll both do it eventually. Yeah, it'll be great. It'll it takes be great. practice. It that's, that's what being a parent mm-hmm. is. I mean, you get to the point, and it, you know what, that's the same thing for true for, like, any family member that, like, you just want them to be happy. And so that even goes with, like, Rapunzel backing down on on her talking with Frederick because she just wants them to be happy. And that's why, you know, kids don't tell their parents off and why parents don't want to punish their children. And, you know, I mean, okay, let me rephrase that. In good and loving households... <laughs> fair because i know mean, that's not a universal experience i'm well aware mm-hmm. but um yeah so so you've got them you know the whole runaround thing and then eugene gets a brilliant idea of i know i'll take them to meet rapunzel because she fixed me so she'll fix them because she's perfect and can do anything because <laughs> you know that was his thought process i mean he never said that but you know that's what he was thinking You're like oh maybe if i introduce you to somebody who's like way better than everybody in the world you'll be convinced <laughs> that you should be a good person so he takes them to the castle and Rapunzel starts playing with them and Pascal and then Red starts to open up a little bit, which is, you know, what makes Angry start to relax a little bit because first she's all pissed off at her because she's like determined to keep being a thief. Um, and I mean, and I love it. This is what we get, you know, Pascal jumping on Lance's shoulder and scaring him, which goes to show that it's not just spiders and scary things, that he's skittish about like everything, which is hysterical. <laughs> Lance is, like, so funny because he is simultaneously the most skittish person on the show, but he's also the most foolhardily brave person on the show. This dude who, like, passed out when Pascal revealed himself on his shoulder also was like, let's break into the Baron's basement. That'll be great. You know? <laughs> so, like, he's just got this this bravado and this skittishness that don't really coincide but manage to live together. Who, who knew? <laughs> So you get all this stuff and they're, you know, playing around the castle and whatnot. And then, you know, you get Eugene tucking angry into bed and all of our hearts melted into oh itty bitty pieces. Oh, my gosh. Pieces. So cute. Oh, 
and and Lance and Red taking oh a nap god. together. <laughs> that fell so asleep cute. next to Red, so she fell asleep on him. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Like those two bonded so hard. Oh, and like when they were the snuggly duckling, and Lance like picks up Red and puts her on his shoulder. He's like, We're making lunch. And just like climbs into the back room of the of the snuggly duckling with Red on his shoulder. It's just like, oh my gosh. I love that they bonded. took kids into a bar. It just <laughs> makes me feel good in my heart. <laughs> I mean, technically, Eugene's already done that because Rapunzel was technically very true. In today's standards, a minor. Eugene, when she stop. Went. Let's see. She was by today's standards a minor, and by today's standards, not legal to drink when he took yeah. her to the bar. You know, yeah, very true. So, Eugene, stop no. being problematic, bud. Clearly, that is his mo: is to take minors into the Snuggly Duckling. Um, next thing you know, like they're gonna get back to Corona, and he's got a cart variant off to the Snuggly Duckling. I know what you need. <laughs> I know, all your troubles. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to scare you straight, just like I did everybody else. I don't think Varian can be scared of anything anymore. <laughs> Me neither. Yep. Except for maybe his own blood. Who knows? Oh, yeah. like, <laughs> I really want that to come up again. Like, yes. seriously. Like, all the stuff he's been through would be so great if he was still squeamish of his own blood. But yeah, so... I mean, you have all these great little bonding moments going throughout, and you've got, you know, then you find out that Angry and Red are, you know, running away from not just the Baron, but specifically Anthony the Weasel, who we'd all met previously in the flashback in The Return of Strongbow. And so that was like a face that made us all go, "Uh uh-oh, we know who that is, you know, and that kind of fun stuff. And so um, they steal Rapunzel's crown and take off, and so... Lance and Eugene is summarily fired from the guard. Well, Lance wasn't fired because he never worked for the guard, as he <laughs> likes to point out. Um, but Eugene is so sure that the girls are in trouble that they go looking for him. I mean, after he gives... I and mean, this is also the episode that you get that great moment of Eugene's vulnerability and Rapunzel making him feel better, which you don't get enough of. Because since it is Rapunzel's story, you get a lot more of her having emotional problems and Eugene talking her down from it. And so this was one of the great instances where, like, nope, it's the other way around. This time, Rapunzel gets to, like, greet him on her window seat and be like, no, no, you're great. I didn't fix you. You fixed yourself. You know, I just showed you a better way. And you like agreed to take it. And, oh, you know what? We haven't talked at all about the plot B. We can go back and talk about that in a minute. Because the plot B is is Cassandra broke her leg. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. <laughs> I forgot and while that, that. Is, and while that is so minor to this plot, you've got a lot of really fun, relatable stuff. Like when Cass is trying to nap and everybody's being loud and she's like literally whining because I just want to sleep. <laughs> You have a lot of that great stuff. But yeah, so Lance and Eugene go after the girls, and the girls have been caught by by Anthony the Weasel. And so Lance and Eugene, well, Eugene comes up with a brilliant idea of we're going to turn ourselves in and then figure out how to escape. (laughs) So they do exactly that. They turn themselves in and then figure out how to escape. And how they figure out to escape is actually that Angry and Red show up and and help them, you know, with their whole lockpicking, fast little movement stuff. They use one of Eugene and Lance's old moves to to distract everybody long enough to get Eugene and Lance out. So, long story short, they go and they return all the treasure and stuff, and we find out that Lance is now the cook of the Snuggly Duckling, but we have literally never seen him do his job. We know that he, like, <laughs> took the first day of work off, and then after that, he left Corona. So, like... <laughs> Lance knows? is me. <laughs> has a job when he gets back from Corona or not. (laughs) So I know that I took this job because Attila was too busy, but I'm leaving. (laughs) I need a personal day or 17. (laughs) I need a a personal year. Exactly. (laughs) I need to go find myself or something. I'm not sure. (laughs) So we end up this episode with The girls are trying the treasure and Eugene and Lance see them running off and, you know, Eugene being sure that they would see them again someday, which makes us all happy because we do want to see them again someday and we get to see them again. Yay! Yay. So, yeah, Angry and Red were like, they're like the darlings of season one, I swear to God. And I don't mean that, like, in that, considering they were in one episode in season one, everybody's like, oh, no, but I love them. You don't understand. So I really love their dynamic. Um, I love that you have Red and her whole 
they kind of like they like this gag in Tangled where there's a character who doesn't speak and then other characters talk about them being chatterboxes, you know, and I enjoy that gag, like like Willow calling um, Friedborg a chatterbox and and a, later on angry saying that Red wouldn't shut up about Eugene and Rapunzel. And so it's just I love that little thing. He's like, yeah, I don't talk in front of people. I just talk when the camera's not on me, you know. <laughs> So, I mean, in both episodes she's been in so far, Red has gotten at least a couple little vocalizations in, you know, one or two, maybe a sentence here, a scream there. Um, So, but yeah, so I really love these girls and I'm excited that we're going to be seeing them again. And I hope we like, they decide to go back to Corona with everybody at some Mm -hmm. point. So us can have our little Eugene and or Lance adopted them fantasy, you know? Oh my gosh. That would be so cute. (laughs) I mean, and now that, like, now that Angry has declared that she and Red are a package deal, I'm like, okay, well, I cannot justify splitting them up, but also don't assume Eugene gets them. You know, let yeah. Lance have them, you know? So. If, if, if we can't split them up, I'd rather they go to Lance. But I feel like at the same time, it wouldn't technically be splitting them up if one, you know, yeah. each one took a respective yeah, you know, it's not child. Yeah, like- because... Lance is probably going to live in the castle yeah. unless something <laughs> horrible happens. <laughs> or, well, very true. <laughs> yeah, because we don't know. <laughs> and Show's that's not over. Me. <laughs> if anything happens to Lance, Tangled Writers, I want you to know, I know where you all were. Oh my gosh. If they killed Lance, <laughs> that would be ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm covering for you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But uh, I would be very upset. <laughs> Yes, I would be extremely upset if something bad happens to Lance because I love Lance so much. He's absolutely my favorite new character. Um, or I should say my favorite series exclusive character because at this point he's not a new character anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so... Well, um he's technically a new character because he wasn't in the movie. I think we can... Well, that's, I mean. that's why I said series yeah. exclusive character. I'm going to start yes. saying that instead, gotcha. instead of new because guess yeah. what Cass is in almost every episode she's not a new character anymore <laughs> she's a series exclusive character so um so yeah guys we're going to personally I kind of want to try to power through episodes since we don't have we only have like three episodes left before um the new stuff starts to air in the US which is when we'll start discussing the new stuff um So, um, we got, yeah, so we're going to try to get through the rest of, of the series. We've got six episodes to go, but one of them is Secret of the Sundrop. So that Mm -hmm. might take a while. Um, so yeah, we're going to try to do that. Um, you might get a couple extra long, um, Tangled Talks out of us because of that, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but anyway, so if you're watching the new stuff, um, Thank you for your discretion, and please continue to tag spoilers or just not talk about it at all. Um, if you are not watching the new stuff, um, I'm in the same boat as you. You are not alone. Um, so, yeah. So, talk to you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.